What up guys, welcome back to Austin's Off-Road Garage. And as you can tell, we're already underneath the hood of the 4Runner. Um, nothing major today. Uh, after our last wheel on trip, um, things got a little rowdy. Actually, what I never recorded is the next day, actually had to go do a little recovery mission at the same place. Guy got stuck in the mud and it was quite the job to get that guy out of there. And on the way home, we threw a check engine light. I can't remember the exact code, but it's it turned out to be the throttle position sensor on this. So got one ordered up and uh, we'll replace that today. That's a pretty quick job. And then we also have some other goodies over here. I'm probably gonna say this wrong, but this dude, I'm Keith, I believe makes these brackets for the lower uh, link brackets. These are like basically like skid plates or reinforcement. They add strength and rigidity to the existing bracket in case you're running like a larger link, a little more stout, the, that factory bracket tends to bend. And this is the bracket I'm talking about right here. It just slides over this and we weld it on one of these is pretty hammered on my truck. It's like the first thing that hits anytime I go over a big rock or anything like that. So, a couple items to take care of today. So let's jump right in and get these installed. All right, so the throttle position sensor is located right here on the throttle body. If you need to know, there it is right there. So it looks like we got one connector and two like Phillips screws so pretty straight up pull that off there Let's see if I can do this without stripping these out well I spoke too soon so I know they're just Phillips screws but this is probably a factory Throttle uh, position sensor here. These probably haven't been out of this truck in 20 years. And all I'm doing is rounding out the screw. I don't really want to do that. And before anybody's like, well, why don't you just clean it? Well, you can't really spray throttle body cleaner in there and get that sensor. I've tried. Um, so let's, we're gonna have to remove this bottle body. There's one on the bottom too, that's doing the same thing to me down here. So it's a little bit more involved than I thought it was gonna be. But to get the throttle body off, there's a couple vacuum lines, your throttle cable, your cruise control, um, and your intake. And then there's these four Allen screws. I believe I've never taken one of these off, so let's just do it. I don't think it'll be that hard.
sweet. We got the uh, throttle body off. This must be like a some heater, some type of like heater control or something. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. There was antifreeze in there. Didn't know that. This is like my first time ever taking this apart. Not hard. So we'll get it all cleaned up. There's the sensor that we're doing right there. That guy. Just didn't want to ruin those screws, man. That would have been more of a headache than taking this entire piece off. So clean everything up and uh, get that new sensor on there. All right, got our new sensor on. Using a genuine Toyota part. Cleaned it up best I could. Looks nice and shiny in there. Ready to reinstall. There we go, all back together. Found out that I'm missing this cap here for this vacuum line, so to get that fixed. Seems to be running just fine though. <laughs> Um, we're going to leave the air filter off. This is an AEM dry filter. The last time I cleaned it or anything was in like 2017. So I ordered a new one. We're just going to leave that off. It probably didn't help in making this sensor read right, having a super dirty air filter, but just been slacking. So we'll get that fixed up. Let's uh, move on and uh, well, maybe we'll throw the air filter back on and uh, just let it run for a minute, make sure everything is hooked up right and all that. And then we'll move on to these new brackets. All right, so we got everything buttoned up on, on the 4Runner. It's running great. I just wanted to go over the uh, the code that I was having. So it's P0120, and it's the throttle position sensor. It responds to the accelerator, accelerator pedal movement. Idle position of the throttle valve is determined by the ECM receiving the signal from the throttle position sensor. This sensor controls engine operations such as fuel cut. So that's just straight from Google. Um, I just went ahead, slapped a new sensor on there, so everything's good, uh, pretty straight up. I wish I could have just got those screws out without taking the whole throttle body off, but if you do run into that issue, it's not very hard to remove that and put it back on. Um, one thing I didn't tell you guys is unhook your battery so that when you, by the time you get your install done, it can... Uh, computer has to relearn everything and all that fun stuff so unhook your battery it's always good practice anyway so let's move on let's get those brackets welded on i'm gonna get the truck jacked up and on jack sands tires removed and then start to fit up all right so we got the link removed i'm only doing one side at a time so the axle doesn't twist just the way i have it jacked up. I don't have jack stands tall enough to get to the frame, but anyway, so now we're going to start the fit up process. I actually thought these were a lot uh, more bent than they actually are. They're not actually that bad. They're like barely abused. Noah, on the other hand, destroyed these things. <laughs> so we actually are going to weld some up on his truck too. So we're going to use mine as a Kind of just a test subject see how smooth this goes this year it's kind of bent we'll straighten that out that one as well but not anything crazy so that just slides up there kind of just get it to fit into this little curve there where that e is and then we're gonna grind everything and then get to welding don't think it should be that bad. Okay, so we got that into place and a couple things that I need to work. 
is this section right here it's just a little too tight so i'm going to try and bend it out just right there a little bit it just sits right in here and it hits the the bracket there and then i think i might take the skid plate off the gas tank might be able to get some really really nasty welds up in there on the back side be nice to fully weld this thing so but if we can if we can only get a couple welds on one side here and maybe here i think i'd be okay with that i don't really know how else he would get up there without pulling the tank and that's quite the job so let's work those areas. All right, so we got this first piece all uh, fitted up basically. Had to take a little bit out here, uh, down these areas right here. Nice hole in my glove. Other than that, fit was great. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna climb under here I've got the frame all ground down on both sides we're gonna slide this on bolt it into place we're gonna actually put the bolt in here and then we're gonna tack it at the front and then yeah we're gonna weld it all the way down and then we're gonna do as much as we can on the back side it's gonna be kind of difficult with that fuel tank in the way so Heck yeah, excited to get welding, man. All right, so, put this in place. I couldn't get this bolt to not be a little a little bit snug when I lined it up, but nothing an impact gun couldn't get out. Pretty big gap right here. Kind of kicking my ass. All right, guys, we got this side almost completely done. Got a pretty big gap right there. I need to fill. Just letting it cool down for a minute, but. Yeah, I got this side fully welded, and then I got the other side as well. Um, I'm not gonna zoom in on my welds because they look like ass, but it should hold. <laughs> oh man, it's been fun though. I love doing this kind of stuff. It's the best way to learn, just get out and do it, man. So, one side done, and uh, we'll move on to the other side. Alrighty, so there it is. I got it all ground down. Looks nice. Throw some spray paint on it and it will look like pretty much like a factory piece almost besides that giant E. <laughs> so shout out to I'm Keith. That bracket pretty sweet man. Well, well designed. I think it will help a lot. Makes a nice little ramp to skid over some boulders i like that i'll have to go test it out when we're done 
and we'll get this one all painted up put back together and then we'll go on to the other side so we can take that link off and start fitting up our other side it's good to get out and weld man it's been so long i'm a little rusty all right there we go all painted up looks sweet can't even really tell there's a bracket there that we added looks nice and factory so heck yeah went ahead and repainted the link as well got everything paint marked torqued down looks awesome let's jump on to the other side now all right so when i was telling you guys there was damage to one of these this is the one i was talking about it's a little bent in here that's pretty much it and it's, it's a little bit beat up not too bad but it is causing our new bracket not to go on so i'm just going to grind this try and pry it out a little bit and then we'll start the fit up of the bracket so what i plan on doing is after i get these installed the main reason they use these is for a little bit stouter of a link and i want to do adjustable links a little bit beefier so we don't bend these ones and uh this helps reinforce this bracket here so that's coming down the pipe teach you guys how to build some links so yeah let's get this going all right this bracket's all ready to be installed fit up went pretty well bad got Ben out here he wants to help huh buddy not even two years old and he knows how to use the jack already he's gonna know more than me by the time he's five <laughs> no. 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 
Say bye. Bye. All right, so this one's all done. Well, it's definitely improved on this side. But uh, I like this side too because I was able to fully weld it on that side. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm just going to grind down these welds, make it look nice and clean, and then uh, we'll paint it up, paint the link, and then reassemble. I think we are done. Yeah, like how these turned out, they're sweet. Here we go. All finished up. Pretty fun little project. All right, so we got that project finished up. Got that check engine light taken care of. We got a little bit more armor added to the 400, which is always awesome in my book. Um, shout out to I'm Keith. I hope I'm saying that right. Those brackets were awesome, man. Perfectly made. So always like to let you guys know about high quality products. Um, so yeah, thanks for hanging out with me today in the shop. Uh, Always good to get some practice welding in. Uh, I'm not satisfied with how that turned out. I mean, it works, but we're gonna get better. So next up, we're gonna probably build some links for this thing, not quite sure when. And then we got something else even bigger in the, in the works. But thanks for hanging out with me again, guys. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.